Hello, everyone, and welcome to season two of Nuna's Nunchi Podcast. I'm so excited with my first guest of the season, Sam Hyun, who I got to know in 2020 over the pandemic, but I feel like we've become fast friends. He's like the boy Tongseng I've never had. I always want a younger brother and it's him. And uh, introducing him, he has a lot on his resume, but speaker, advocate, and currently the political director for Sonia Chang Diaz's gubernatorial campaign. So he is an exciting person. I am so excited to have him. And we're going to talk all about K-dramas and what they've done for him in his life. Sam, welcome. Hey, I'm super excited to be here and just really grateful to have you in my life. And I think everybody who has ever come across you is blessed to, to say that um, they've they've met you and uh, they've been touched by you. And so uh, I'm excited to be here. (laughs) Thank you so much. And I'm so excited that you agreed to be my first guest because I'm just privileged to talk to you. And K-dramas, let's talk some fun because I know what you do for right now is is a little bit heavier, but how, how, what has, tell me the experience that you've had with K-dramas, like from early on or recently, tell me your history. Yeah, I've been watching K-dramas my whole life. You know, when after church, we would go to the um, the video store, right? And you go and rent out like the, the cassette, like the-, the, the VHS. Video. Yeah, the VHS and you have to rent it. And like everybody like bolts out of at a church, right? Because you got to get the latest episode and there's only a few copies and you're fighting over it. You can like the smell, I can still remember like in Alston. Um, and it's like, you know, f- funny watching kind of like the elders and deacons like, oh, you watch that? Like, you know, it's so <laughs> and funny. It's, right? And you're like, oh my God, you watched. It. And so that's, those are my first memories. And I think for me, um, it was a historical uh, dramas in particular. And I remember like, I was so enthralled by learning about Korean history and the Kings and, and who are the important figures. So um, I would pretend to you know, be asleep so like my parents wouldn't put me to bed, but like I'd be like peeking out of one eye, like <laughs> that's but, so funny. And it turns out that you know I thought I was so slick at like you know when I was a kid, but my parents knew they just were like we're gonna let you watch. Wow! And so the, when you say early on, like elementary school, mm-hmm. wow. So do you remember your first few K dramas? I don't remember the name, but it was like like Hejong Taewon. And like, mm. I think like, it was it's like, just like the, all the, especially I just remember like the, the historical drama. Yeah, cause like, I'm trying to think of your, uh, your, the, the age of that time. Early um, 90s. Oh, in the early nineties. Yeah. So, um, okay. The, I, I can't think I'm drawing a blank, but you don't remember, but you like the historical dramas cause you're learning about the culture. Do you remember some, so early on, and that was your kind of experience with it. Now, did you always stick with them? growing up like watching them consistently or did you like take a break no I, I think that was the one thing it's like no matter how I was you know so I got a lot of you know bullying because of you know being Korean and or being Asian and um not really having a, a robust community here where I grew up in Newton um it's since changed but that during that time it was really hard to find other other Korean Americans who really understood Um, But that was how I could stay connected and rooted to my culture, who I am, my identity. So I always watch K-dramas and also like they were just always better than American TV. So, (laughs) yeah. So do you have some memorable ones that really impacted you or that you're really fond of? I I think for me, it's really just a a combination. Like it was was so different bits and pieces, right? Like you would watch, um, you know, because you're picking up on cultural context in so many ways. And then you're picking up on historical context. And then um, I think one, um, I used to call him like Kim Tokang, but like, it was like completely butchering his name, but it was Kim, uh, Kim Tu Han. And mm. it was, it was like mm-hmm. Korean gangster um, during the, during Japanese imperial rule of Korea. And oh, wow. so mm-hmm. I just remember watching that vividly because while he is a gangster and, you, you know, clearly, um, a lot of violence and wasn't exactly a model citizen. What I took away from it was, you know, the pride and the strength and resiliency of Koreans um, and how we survived over uh, centuries of, of being attacked and being brutalized. And, um, but that we always rose to the occasion and um, that never left me. And I just remember watching that and every single episode was just 
really showing me um, who, what it meant to be Korean and, and why we are the way we are. Wow, I love that. What was the name of that K-drama? It was like Kim, Kim it was Do about Kim Do-han. I forget okay, exactly. Okay, I'm gonna have to re recall that because wow, I mean, I, you to teach you all that, because I feel like that's referring to Han a little bit, you know, that Han in us, right? Because of our sad history and all that. Um, wow, so you really are, I would say you're the more experienced one with K-dramas than me. So then now let's fast forward a little bit and and now look at where we are today with mm -hmm. K-dramas. What are your thoughts on that? Having grown up with them and, and look at where they are now globally. You know, it's, it's really interesting because it, it does show the change and shift in, you know, the impact of Korean um, heritage, culture, um, and influence over the years. And it really shows like just how like Korea has grown up in terms of as an economic power after, you know, you saw the, you know, in the 80s with the IMF, it just the economy collapsed. And then you have to rebuild it as one of the four, the Asian tigers. Um, and you see this concerted effort of, you know, the Korean government into pushing um, Korean media but also, you know, just how much the culture has changed. And so, you know, you saw from much more of a, a rural and, and uh, kind of farmer type, you know, old traditional Korean culture to this first world, rapidly changing, rapidly moving. Um, and to think that like a tiny peninsula of Korea is now influenced, the amount of influence it has on uh, international culture is, is really uh, mind boggling. And as a kid, I, could you have, seen that no like now that my friends are asking me to take them out to k barbecue asking about k drama like eating kimchi like it's just right. just mind-boggling me too and, and and i think but i can clear i can clearly hear the the proudness in your voice you know that that's where we've come um okay so i have to share this because you know i tend to get emotional watching k dramas so are you the type to get emotional like crying through your way watching them because i want to see sam <laughs> <laughs> what are some yeah. of the ones that have really brought, well, first of all, all of them can bring us to tears in some sort of fashion, but any really remarkably poignant, touching ones that just really gripped you? I, you know, I wish I could remember. I am blanking on the name right now, but that was one that I watched when I was a teenager and it was during the probably most difficult time of my family's life. And um, it was just at that point, my dad had left the family and it was just my mom, myself mm -hmm. and my younger sister. And we were watching this you know, K drama, and they're always like, you know, the poor family, and and it was like, you know, the the young woman who was taking care of her her blind mother, and she got screwed over, and someone like uh, lit the apartment on fire, and her mom like couldn't make it out and died, and I just remember sobbing. Oh my gosh, why am I drawing a blank on that? Um, but I remember sobbing because. You know, it just again reminded me of the amount of pain that Koreans carry and how much struggle that we've gone through. And this, in spite of what everybody sees in terms of the, the glamour and the glitz and glory and, um, you know, of, of, of who Korea likes to portray itself as now, is that there's still so many who are, are carrying a lot of generational trauma. Um, and, and that just, you know, for me also was a trigger point because of how much we were struggling and how much my mom meant to me and, and still means to me today. And, um, so that was really, you know, uh, the, I think a lot of the K dramas and why it really impacts people so much is the realness and, and how much of the trauma and the pain that we do carry. Wow. So, I mean, first of all, thank you for sharing that story. I know, I know a little bit about that in your, just in your childhood and, and but I didn't realize as you're watching a K-drama when you're crying and I guess the emotional connection it made, was it just, is it more just you were going through that difficulty and it was just validating to see something like that, like the, the hardship in a K-drama, because I'm trying to, I'd like to make the connection a little bit. Yeah, I think for sure. Like when you see and know that they're Korean, right? Like you, you, you understand, like you see yourself in that versus like, if I'm watching, you know, all white cast, like sure, there are going to be some, you know, some similarities and connections, but it's not the same emotional connection and impact as knowing that somebody who has from the same ethnic cultural background, like, um, and that's that struggle, there's a lot more areas for connection there. And I think that's yeah. why, what you mean? 
they, they're, it's so important to us because, you know, of that, having that disconnect of, of who we are as Korean and wanting to still connect and wanting to still feel that, that um, acceptance and, mm. and but also understanding. It's like, we're, you know, we're watching and, and having more of an understanding of ourselves and why we feel the things that we do, why we experience the things that we do. I mean, you just talked about how much I, that's why I love K-dramas, helping us understand and make sense of what we're experiencing. So then that said, recent times, what are some of your favorites? Because we've been watching a lot more in the pandemic. I don't know about you, but I have <laughs> in the pandemic. I would love to hear some of your favorites and, and why. Um, K2 was one that jumps out to me. Um, K2 is, is just like so cool, right? Like yeah. it was just the, the, the cinematography, the acting, the, the, the plot twists. Um, mm-hmm. Just so yeah. you know, uh, those were awesome. I, I thought Itaewon class in particular for me was uh, so poignant because it touched on so many uh, societal issues that Korea has yet to deal with in terms of the way it treats, um, you know, non-homogenous uh, Korean folks, you know, folks who are mixed yeah. race, um, those transgender, um, LGBTQ issues. Um, I think that was the it, first one I've seen do all that yeah. in one, yeah. And, and do it in the way, and, and, and I, I felt did it justice. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, just trying for like trauma porn or just for representative sake, but to actually shed light and and push the culture forward. I agree. Yeah. And good word, trauma porn. Um, and then, so that's each in one class. And then, how about, do you have some ones that you felt were? Because th- those are two on the, well, K2 is not heavy, but any romantic, what's your favorite genre? Let's start there. What's your favorite genre? Do you have a favorite genre? Um, definitely historical ones. Um, those are the ones, always will be my favorite. So anytime those come on, like any of those, like the dramas or the movies, I'll watch them. Like, that's so cool. You don't really hear a lot of people saying that's their favorite genre. Okay. So do you have a favorite historical, recent, historical, recent drama? I have one, but I don't know. Um, there was the the zombie one. Um, oh, my oh God. kingdom. Yeah, kingdom was kingdom. I so I really te- te- like tend to not really like horror stuff, but kingdom was awesome. I mean, I'm I am. Uh, I I know that they came out with like the the kind of pre kingdom or po- was a pre or post. Yeah, pre. But, uh, yeah, they're, yeah with, like, that's the, a good one too. She's pretty yeah. badass in there. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. kingdom was 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 super awesome. Um, I agree with that. I'm not a zombie thing too, but it just historically was very cool to see just the the storyline and the way, yeah, I thought it was very well done. I agree. Um, okay. And then any others that you really love? Um, I mean, uh, oh my God, why am I blanking on this right now again? Um, recent, recent historical yeah, drama? Yeah, the North Korean. Oh, Crash Landing? Crash Landing on You was really yeah. good. <laughs> Is that the one um, you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, okay. Crash Landing was really good. And then also um, uh, Hometown Cha-Cha-Cha. Hometown Cha-Cha-Cha, okay, let's talk, well, Crash Landing on you, of course, I agree with that, but Hometown Cha-Cha-Cha is pretty recent. So yeah. tell me what you loved about Hometown Cha-Cha-Cha, because I love that too. Um, it was. I love hearing a guy talking about it. That's why I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, I think for me with Hometown Cha-Cha-Cha, like it just, there was a lot of lessons to be learned. And I think, you know, in terms of like Korean men, the struggles and from a man's, you know, um, you know, from a, from a perspective of where I'm coming from, it's watching, you know, a lot of the patriarchal ways are being talked about in, in hometown cha-cha-cha. And especially when you see the men of struggling to deal with and be confronted now that the women are really starting to push back and really starting to not no longer take the the, the nonsense for example the scene about the sock right yes i cr- i cried i mean it was actually hard to watch i don't know how i mean like hard as in jarring right well i'm like wow really emotionally charged i'll let you share it but i love that scene and I saw so you want to set it up for the audience. People might not remember the sock scene. I don't know, sure. how you know but um, you know, in for that sock scene, it was basically um before this couple got um divorced, and it was the last fight that led to their divorce. And he woke up and was hungover and was eating, you know, the breakfast that his wife had deliciously made him and she picks up this sock and like just loses it. And 
starts just yelling at him, screaming at him. He's so confused because he's like, what is the big deal about one dirty sock? Um, why can't, you know, you just either I pick it up or you pick it up and just couldn't fathom. And then because of that, he that her reaction to that small item was his justification for saying that, oh, I was right to, you know, leave her. I was right to, you yeah. know. And so that I thought brought up so many different angles of miscommunication and misunderstanding, the different pressures and, and the challenges and demons that we all have um, that we may not even share with our, our partners um, and how that, you know, eventually corrodes your relationship. And, and then, but then also the broader impact, right? Their relationship fracturing didn't just impact their relationship, but it really impacted the whole community because then it turned people into different factions. It turned, you know, people weren't able, didn't, were tiptoeing around each other. And so in so many ways, um, you know, how our own actions and our inability to communicate with one another and understand one another can really reverberate um, around the entire ecosystem that we exist in. Yeah, I know. I really, really love that scene. Um, so thanks for sharing that. And wow, I love that connection you just made. So on, on a final note, you know that I like to talk about K-dramas from a mental health perspective, and, and you already just alluded to a lot of it. So I want to ask you a pretty broad question. How has K-dramas or how have K-dramas helped you with your mental health? I think a lot of times, especially when I'm watching shows like, you know, Hometown Cha Cha Cha, like it, it pieces together a lot of things for me and seeing other people going through things that I may be experiencing may, may not be the same, but in terms of um, being able to understand it and have the frameworks and, and then being um, analyze my own feelings and then have an, ex, uh, an example to be able to build off of, it definitely helps me um, calm down in many ways. And also like, you know, just being able to watch something that that entertaining, like it, to get away a break from a lot of the stressors in my life. Um, you know, I don't believe that we should be running from our, from our problems, but it doesn't mean that we always have to be confronting it and challenging it. it, it we have to be able to give ourselves a break. And in many ways, um, K-dramas for me has been my place of solace and reprieve over the years. Yeah, I totally agree. I always say escapism is necessary <laughs> for us to, you know, survive and have some recharging going on so any last words like how, do you have a like a do you have a pitch or because i was asked to ask people because i love promoting k-dramas are there people that you interact with that are like why do you watch k-dramas or what do you love about k-dramas do you have a little pitch that you share with people or share you could share it here New yeah I, you know it's interesting i i don't know if the pitch is as like necessary anymore right like you see um it's more of like instead of me having to pitch is me having to explain the nuances that people are missing and so you know with squid game you know yeah. one of my one of my uh friends that i made over social media she went like super viral because she was talking about the um the misses in the translations um in, in the subtitles and because you're missing important context because the subtitles are, are incorrect it doesn't allow you to actually understand the nuances of the show that are critical to understanding the entire premise and the plot so um, but for me, I would say this, it's, it's not a pitch of, of to watch, it's when you're watching, I would say, um, understand of, if you're not Korean, if you're not, you know, a East Asian, to not view it from the lens of Western perspective, and to not impart your own stereotypes and biases onto the show, but rather try to understand it from the viewpoint and the lens of, of you know, Korean culture of Korean folks. And, and while I understand that, you know, if you're not Korean, it's, it's gonna be really difficult to do that. But it is important that when you're giving an, an analysis, when you are trying to understand it, that you are, aren't imparting your biases into it. So, um, because then when you start talking about to other people, then you may actually be um, spreading misinformation and mm. uh, actually leading them uh, astray. And while a good intention, it will have a negative impacts. And, and um, always just be respectful you know when like you're 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 being invited into someone else's culture someone else's home and so just to be respectful of when you're watching and when you are um engaging in in someone else's community thanks so much for that sam wow i mean i think that's the first time i've heard that perspective of just 
understand because everybody has their two cents about K-dramas, right? Everybody wants to say stuff, including Korean Americans and Koreans. But that said, I am so excited to have you as my first guest for season two. Thank you for joining me. And I know we'll be keeping in touch. So I just wanted to say to folks, I hope you enjoy this episode and see you again soon. Bye. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. You can listen in on platforms such as Spotify, Pandora, Google, and Apple, but also watch the podcast on our Nunazuchi YouTube channel every Monday where it launches at 6 p.m. Eastern.